I guess they do uh, airbrush out the tattoo, don't they? You want to see it? You really want to see it? Fine. Let's look at that tattoo up close and personal, shall we? And what are these? Oh, my God, breasts. How does anybody practice medicine holding these things around? And what do we got back here? Let's see if I remember my anatomy. Glutes, right? Let's study them. Shall we gather around and check out the booty that put Izzy Stevens through med school? Have you had enough or should I continue? Because I have a few more very interesting tattoos. You want to call me Dr. Model? That's fine. Just remember that while you're sitting on 200 grand of student loans, I'm out of debt. I'll take it down. Don't bother. It's what off. What is going on in here? Everybody, out. We already out. have it. Mr. Herman is a patient, a surgical patient, who's sick and embarrassed and tired of being stared at. You two, this isn't a zoo. Out, out, out. You know, if all of you want to point and whisper and stare at me, Knock yourselves out. Look at Meredith. Isn't she sad and pathetic and heartbroken? Maybe she's gone mental. Maybe I have. But leave Mr. Herman alone. You should be ashamed of yourself. And what are you looking at? I never should have told you about George. No, it's fine. I'm glad I know about him and the vet. You really get around. What did you just say to me? It's unforgivable. I don't remember ever asking you to forgive me. So was anything a phase? Who's next? Alex? Because I hear he likes to sleep around. You two have that in common. You don't get to call me a whore. When I met you, I thought I had found the person that I was going to spend the rest of my life with. I was done. So all the boys and all the bars and all the obvious daddy issues, who cared? Because I was done. You left me. You chose Addison. I'm all glued back together now. I make no apologies for how I chose to repair what you broke. You don't get to call me a whore. Only we broke up. And I've been wanting to hear this from you for how long? And, and you wait until now to say it to me after we've broken up? I'm out of my element here. I, I break bones for a living. I, I, I used to live in the basement. Most days I wear last night's eyeliner to work. I don't give a crap what other people think about me because I am a happily independent, successful woman and I like it that way. Only when you say stuff like this, it, it just it makes things too hard. So please, don't chase me anymore. Unless you're ready to catch me. You want Meredith. You're in charge. Do you think I like making these decisions for you? Do you think it's fun to get calls from the nursing home asking whether I was planning on giving the nurse who changes you every morning a Christmas tip? But I do it because you have managed to alienate everybody else in your life. And I am the only one. So I have to step up and do it. You want to know why I'm so unfocused? so ordinary you want to know what happened to me you you happened to me then let me refuse the heart surgery no why not because killing my mother is not going to be another thing that happens to me i know it was susan's birthday and i'm sure it was a very hard day for the both of you and he wasn't actually a problem he was kind of charming but he seemed very sad, and I'd hate to see it happen again. So maybe you should think about keeping a better eye on him. Every day is my mother's birthday. My mother was born in March. He lied. He's a liar. And I'm glad. Really, I'm glad that you found him charming. I'm sure he was delightful. He's a blast after five drinks. Not so much after nine, though, he gets a little weepy and mean. He's a drunk, Meredith. He probably came in and told you how wonderful you are. 
how sad he is that he doesn't get to spend more time with you. Now, yesterday, he said that I was his favorite daughter. The day before, I was an ungrateful bitch. The week before, he wrote me a check for $20,000 because he said I deserved everything life had to offer because he was so proud of me, a lifetime's worth of proud. So you can't listen to anything that he says because it's not about you. It's about a pint and a half of doers. So thank you for letting me know that I need to keep a better eye on him. Thanks. Daddy, is that Father Kevin? Hello, Calliope. Wait, are you two here to... You think you can pray away the gay? We can just sit and talk. Oh, no, we... You can't pray away the gay. Calliope Efigenia Torres! You can't pray away the gay! You don't have much experience with gay people. Even though Uncle Berto hasn't been single for six years for no reason. Calliope. He's still in adjustment. That said, you should have adjusted by now. I mean, you're supposed to love me, no matter what. That's what a parent does. I love you with all my heart. But with all that's going on with you now, it's... look, I'm scared for you. It's an abomination. It's an eternity in hell. Let's not start with words like hell. Oh, that's why you flew 3,000 miles? To tell me I was going to hell? I thought you came here to apologize. I can't apologize, Calliope. I don't understand what happened or where I went wrong. Where you went wrong? Look, Leviticus. Thou shalt not lie with a man as one oh, lies with a female. Oh, don't do that, it Daddy. Don't quote the Bible at me. The outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and the, the sin is exceedingly great. Carlos, this is not what we... Jesus, a new commandment that I give unto you, that you love one another. Romans, but we know Jesus, that the Lord... Jesus, he who is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. So you admitted to sin. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Jesus, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Jesus, blessed are those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is my savior, daddy, not you. And Jesus would be ashamed of you for judging me. He would be ashamed of you for turning your back on me. He would be ashamed. Amber, you survived a horrible car wreck. You'll survive this too. I know, but hey, what do we always say? We're both alive. That's what matters. Everything else is just bumps and bruises. You can cry. Amber, it's fine. It's a lot to take in all at once. No, no, she needs to stay positive. That's how we get through. We stay positive. She was excited. She was hopeful. She was eager. And that has been crushed. She has the right to have some feelings. She can be positive tomorrow. You can be positive tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know what? You can be scared and you can be pissed. And you can lie here like a garden slug till you die for all I care. But you will not, not become a monster that takes everyone else down with them. You will treat people with kindness and respect. And you will start with yourself. And you will start by standing up. And you will do so by the time I count to three. Or I will drag your ass out of this bed. So, one, two, three. Okay. You got it, you got it, you got it. All right, good. There you good, go. good, good. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Great. Look at that, you got it. <laughs> good. Good. good job. All right, look at you. You are a gifted surgeon with an extraordinary mind. Don't let what he wants eclipse what you need. He's very dreamy, but he is not the sun. You are. I can be here for you. I know how to do this. I can be a trusted sister for you. Just, how do you want to play this? Do you need me to tell you you're a beautiful bride and kick your ass down that aisle? You're a beautiful bride. Turn around, I'll start kicking. Do you need me to call your mother and yell at her? I'm your girl. Do you need a shoulder to cry on? I have to. Do you want to freak out and call it off? Do you want to run? I'll drive the getaway car. Just 
let me know what you need. I'm here for you. I am your family, Amelia. Today, I am your person. Sorry. No, you don't have to. I do. I really thought I was better than you. I believed everything he told me about you. God, I'm smart. I'm a scientist. I'm a feminist. I never thought that I would end up in something like this. It happened so slow. I stopped talking to, to co-workers, friends he didn't like, and then my family didn't understand. They got worried, so I just brushed them off and then stopped talking to them too, and then my circle got smaller and smaller and smaller until all I had left was him. And then I stopped believing myself, things I had seen and heard, things I knew, because he told me I was crazy and I just believed him. He knows me so well, he can zero in on an insecurity and, and make a whole argument turn on a dime, and now it's my fault, it's my fault again. I'm always the one that's wrong. When he started hitting me, it was just barely a surprise. And he told me it was my fault, and I actually believed him. Until you talked to me yesterday, I really believed him. How did I believe him? Because he was good to you in the beginning. And on the good days. <sighs> Jenny, we're not stupid. We didn't fall for someone who beat us. We fell for someone who made us laugh and feel wanted and loved and seen. Paul is brilliant and charming and persuasive, and the good outweighed the bad until it didn't. Dr. Krev asked us to all stand here. Do we know why? Just that a patient needs us. She needs all of us. Okay. Are you ready? Standing on the platform Watching you go Yes It's like no other pain I've ever known seen soldiers like this. Young women and young men brutalized with no idea how to talk about it. What you did today with Abby, that was not protocol. I know, I know, and I'm sorry. I'm saying it should be. 